How do you take an iconic movie moment and recreate it with a cheap stool, your camera and Photoshop? Here's how. Play tape. <laughs> Hey team, welcome to my first YouTube video. I'm Mark McGee. Who's this guy? And recently I've had a lot of requests asking how I create some of my top performing images on Instagram. With images like Splash, Mission Impossible, Spider-Man, Walk the Camera, Taxi and The Matrix. Which is today's video. So this brand new channel will be all about start to finish image making, concepts and composition, lighting, camera settings, editing, retouching and compositing, and finally optimizing for Instagram. So, fancy coming on a journey with me? Let's go team. And cut. How was that? Anyone? You're coming with me. Okay, some stuff you're gonna need. Shooting this with a Sony a7 III, 24 millimeter Sigma art lens, absolutely gorgeous. Camera for a prop, anything will do, just don't drop it. Box standard tripod, or a really good one you got for Christmas. Remote control, Sony compatible, 10 quid on Amazon. Folding cheap stool. And finally, a cool pair of shades. That's it. Let's shoot this, people. Okay, camera settings. As it's a bright sunny day, the dynamic range is gonna be big. So don't worry about blowing out the sky. Expose for the subject. I've set the camera to manual. Aperture f8 focusing on my face. This should give me a sharp image front to back shutter I've set to 640th of a second ISO 800 gets me correct exposure and white balance uh, Daylight if your camera doesn't have face detection place an object near your target focus on that then switch to manual Take the first image throwing the jacket behind you. Take the second image using a two second timer. This is to capture the camera shot. Take the final image, two second timer, capturing the agent shot. Ponzi slow-mo walk, cup of tea. Welcome to my editing suite, AKA the landing just outside the bathroom. <laughs> what? So I have my three raw images open in Capture One and I'm gonna do some basic global adjustments to begin with, bumping the shadows to around 75, um, highlights reduced down to around minus 50, um, saturation down to minus 15, and I'm gonna introduce some of that green matrix color to the white balance. Now synchronize the adjustments to the two other images by shift clicking the bottom image to select all three, then shift copy and apply. Now all three images have the same adjustments, ship them over to Photoshop. I use the Photoshop format, resolution 300 and 16 bit. Okay, so I have my three images ready in Photoshop and this image with the jacket blowing in the wind will act as my main image which I will slowly layer into a composite and hopefully a masterpiece. Um, it's good practice to make a copy of the background layer so you always have the original as a reference. So hit Ctrl or Command J to copy the layer. The first piece of the puzzle is adding the camera to the main image. So swap over to that image, make a copy of the background layer, then take the pen tool and create a path around the hand and the camera. I'll just whiz through this so I don't bore you to death. Okay. 
Okay, now turn this into a selection. Um, use a feather radius of one pixel, which is fine, and then Control or Command C to copy. Head back to the main image, Control or Command V to paste. With the Move tool selected, I'm just going to nudge this into place over the original hand. Now, as you can see, there's a couple of fingers still poking out to which we need to sort. Just hide this new layer, take the Clone Stamp tool, and using the Alt key, take a sample of the t-shirt near the area and make those fingers disappear. Now we just need to blend in this sleeve here to complete the first composite. So with the Clone Stamp tool selected, take a few little samples and magic away those areas we don't want. The second part of the composite is adding the agent into the picture. So head over to that image. Once again, take the pen tool and make a clean selection around the agent. Once you reach the floor, just include some of the shadows and the floor itself. Make a selection, Control or Command C to copy, head back to the main image and Control or Command V to paste. Now it's time to line the layers up. A good tip here is to take the opacity down to 50% so you can see the underlying layer, then use the cracks in the floor to line them up. Bring the opacity back to 100% to create a layer mask with the foreground colour set as black. Choose a hard edge brush and roughly mask out the area hiding the legs. Then press X to toggle the foreground colour to white, reduce the size of the brush for precision and tidy up the edge. A graphics tablet really helps with this process. This one is a Wacom Intuos Pro, amazing. Now it's time to transform this scene into a city rooftop, just like the movie. I found this royalty-free stock image on pexels.com, which is perfect. Import it into the project, Place it where you want it, and stack it underneath the other layers. With the main image selected, take the pen tool and make a selection where you want the rooftop revealed. To simplify things, switch off the agent layer. We can bring him back once the selection's made. Turn this into a selection and create an inverted layer mask by holding the Alt key. Turn back on the agent layer and bingo! Except there's a problem. There's some of my garden which needs masking out. So with the agent mask selected, foreground colour set to black, small hard edge brush, reveal the remaining rooftop. Now we need to make this guy float, which means removing the stool. I'll use a combination of the spot healing tool and the clone stamp tool for this process. Whatever the spot healing brush can't achieve, I'll switch over to the clone stamp just to tidy things up. We 
need to add some depth of field now to this image by creating separation between the foreground and the background. So with the city background selected, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and add a blur radius of around 10 pixels. For even more separation, create a new layer over the background. Choose a white, large, soft edge brush and just paint behind the agent. Reduce the opacity to around 15%. And a little before and after shows a nice haze in the distance. Now it's time to color grade the image. So with the top layer selected, we're just going to choose the color balance adjustment layer. And we'll firstly go to the shadows. Um, we're going to add some cyans around negative 15, some greens to the shadows and a little bit of blue. We'll head over to the midtones and we're just going to add quite a bit of green here, around 23 and some blues. Now to the highlights, just going to balance it out with a bit of red, a bit more green and a touch of blue to finish. And a little before and after, nice. So with the foreground layer selected, we're just going to add a bit more contrast to this front part of the image. So um, we're going to create a curves adjustment layer and we're going to clip it to that foreground image so it doesn't affect the city part of the background. Um, just going to add a bit of an S curve and a little before and after. That's great. And we just need to do the same for the camera layer above it. So create a curves adjustment layer, clip it to the camera, and just gonna create even more of an S-curve, slightly more in the highlights. There we go. And a before and after really makes that camera pop. The red in the jacket is pulling my focus, so we're just going to desaturate this. So we're going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer and then we're going to target the red in the sleeve with this little eyedropper. And we're just going to change the color so we can see it more clearly as a blue green. And then we're just going to reduce down the target just to target those reds. And then bring down the saturation completely. Then we're going to invert the mask with Command or Control I. Take a brush, foreground color as white, and then we're just going to reveal the desaturated red underneath. Perfect. One more element we're going to add is a lens to this image. So here's a picture I took just after the shoot and I'm just going to create a selection with the radial tool and control or command C to copy and we're just going to control or command V and paste it into our image and we're just going to place it over the original camera and this is just going to make the lens look a little bit more alive. Now we need to color balance the lens. Create a copy of the original color balance, drag it above the lens and clip it. Finally, it's time to crop for Instagram. So with the crop tool selected, choose a ratio of 10 by eight, which is the maximum crop factor Instagram will accept. And then we're going to export it as a JPEG Set the quality to 72%. I'll go into more detail why in my next video. And a width of 1080, height 1350, and export it. And here is my final image. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed my first stab at YouTube glory. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it, leave some comments, and please subscribe. There's gonna be loads more videos on the way. See you team. And cut. Oh, I need a cup of tea.